now have in your program two verses that will be sung together to the tune of a hymn called We Gather Together. I thought the best way to have us be able to participate fully in this, I will sing myself the melody for you so that you can hear how it goes and I'll sing words from, from my hymnal. And then um, we will sing the two verses that are printed as they are printed in the bulletin. And uh, hopefully knowing this, um, you'll be able to participate a little more fully. When the time comes for us to sing, um, if it's appropriate, if you feel it's appropriate, um, we practice the understanding that you sing most fully when you stand up. So when we come to singing, if you wish to stand up and, and let yourself really sing, you are welcome to do that. But this is how we gather together goes. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chastens and paces his will to make known. The wicked oppressing, now see he's from distressing. Sing praises to his name, he forgets not his own. So let's apply that to these two verses that are printed in our bulletin. <laughs> We gather together in joyful thanksgiving, acclaiming creation whose bounty we share. Oh, sorrow and gladness we find now in our living. We sing a hymn of praise to the life that we bear. We When bound to human care and hope, then we are free. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Brother Lay. I have been asked to do an abridged reading of the Thanksgiving proclamation uh, that was signed by President Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States of America, on October 3, 1863. Uh, this proclamation was written in the midst of the American Civil War. So I would encourage you, because I don't like to mess with other people's words, <laughs> but they want it just to be brief. <laughs> so I would encourage you, seriously, to read the entire proclamation. And there's a lot of things in there that probably today would make a lot of people feel uncomfortable. But that's how it was during President Lincoln's day. The year that is drawing toward its close has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and helpful skies. To these boundaries which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come. Others have been added, which are so extraordinary in nature that they cannot fail to penetrate and soften even the heart which is habitually insensible to the ever watchful providence of Almighty God. Needful divisions of wealth and of strength from the fields of peaceful industry to the national defense, have not arrested the plow, the shuttle, or the ship. The ax has enlarged the borders of our settlements and the mines, as well of iron and coal, as of the precious metals, have yielded even more abundantly than heretofore. Population has steadily increased, and the country, rejoicing in the conscience of augmented strength and vigor, is permitted to expect continuance of years with large increase of freedom. 
No human counsel had devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God. It has seemed to me fit and proper that they shall be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States, and also those who are at sea, and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. And I recommend to them that while offering up the ascriptions justly due to him for such singular de deliverances and blessings, they do also <coughs> fervently implore the interposition of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it as soon as may be consistent with the divine purpose to the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and unity. Amen. This is a day which was created for us. Let us be thankful for it. Let us be thankful for the capacity to hear, to see, to think. It is time to celebrate the gifts of life, to share religious community, to affirm, to affirm our moral values, to gain strength, courage, and comfort, and to be challenged to create a better world. Let us be especially grateful for the ties of love that give meaning, dignity, and worth to the life we each live every day. In the spirit of gratitude in which we are gathered today, we want to take an offering up to benefit the Brooks Women in Crisis, that is a women's uh, domestic violence shelter in the city of Reading. Uh, there will be a basket going around, and please give freely. And like again, I said, it will benefit the women at the Burks Women in Crisis Center. Thank you.